Those who persisted, I ordered executed, for I did not doubt that whatever the nature of their creed, stubbornness and inflexible obstinacy surely deserve to be punished. These are the chilling words of Pliny the Younger, a Roman governor, as he described the unwavering faith of early Christians. Imagine living in a time when professing your faith could mean facing the most brutal of deaths. Despite the threat of execution, many refused to deny Jesus, a testament to their profound belief in his divinity. What would drive people to such extremes, if not the undeniable truth of their experiences? Pliny the Younger, a Roman governor in Bithynia Pontus, modern-day Turkey, wrote a letter to Emperor Trajan around AD 112, seeking guidance on how to deal with Christians. This letter, part of Pliny's extensive correspondence, is one of the earliest non-biblical references to early Christian practices and the Roman Empire's approach to dealing with the burgeoning Christian population. Pliny was concerned about the spread of Christianity and the steadfastness of Christians in their faith, which he saw as a potential threat to Roman order and stability. In his letter, Pliny detailed the practices and beliefs of the Christians he had interrogated. He described their habit of meeting on a fixed day before dawn to sing hymns to Christ as to a God and their commitment to living morally upright lives. Here are some key excerpts from the letter that highlight these practices. They were accustomed to meet on a fixed day before dawn and sing responsively a hymn to Christ as to a God and to bind themselves by oath, not to some crime, but not to commit fraud, theft or adultery, not falsify their trust, nor to refuse to return a trust when called upon to do so. Pliny wrote about his approach to handling those accused of being Christians. Those who persisted, I ordered executed. For I did not doubt that whatever the nature of their creed, stubbornness and inflexible obstinacy surely deserve to be punished. He also described the responses he received from those who denied being Christians. Those who denied that they were or had been Christians when they invoked the gods in words dictated by me, offered prayer with incense and wine to your image, which I had ordered to be brought for this purpose together with statues of the gods, and moreover, cursed Christ, none of which those who are really Christians, it is said, can be forced to do. These, I thought, should be discharged. Pliny's letter highlights the remarkable resilience and commitment of early Christians Despite the severe consequences, many refused to recant their faith in Jesus Christ. This unwavering dedication is significant because it suggests a profound belief in the truth of their convictions. The early Christians' willingness to face execution rather than deny their faith indicates they were deeply convinced of the reality of Jesus' resurrection and divinity. Pliny's observations provide a glimpse into the early Christian community's practices and the extent of their devotion. It also underscores the challenges they faced in maintaining their faith in a hostile environment, highlighting the transformative impact of Jesus' teachings and the early church's growth despite intense persecution. The insistence of Christians to worship Christ as to a God directly points to their belief in his divinity, a central tenet of Christian faith. Flavius Josephus, a first-century Jewish historian, provides a critical account of the early Christians and their persecution under Roman rule. One of the most harrowing examples of this persecution is the use of Christians as human torches. Emperor Nero, who reigned from AD 54 to 68, is infamously known for blaming Christians for the Great Fire of Rome in AD 64. To punish them and divert suspicion from himself, Nero subjected Christians to brutal executions, including burning them alive to light up his gardens at night. In Antiquities 18, Josephus writes, Now there was about this time, Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, 
a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct at this day. This passage, though its authenticity has been debated, clearly outlines the early Christian belief in Jesus' divinity and his resurrection, which are central tenets of Christian faith. It is one of the earliest non-Christian references to Jesus and his followers, underscoring their unwavering conviction that Jesus was indeed the Christ, the Son of God. Josephus also records the widespread suffering and persecution of Christians during this period, particularly under Emperor Nero, who sought to blame the great fire of Rome on Christians. Josephus and other historians detail how Christians were brutally executed, serving as human torches in Nero's gardens or being torn apart by wild beasts in the Colosseum. Despite this horrific persecution, Christians remained steadfast in their faith, refusing to renounce their belief in Jesus Christ. The Colosseum in Rome, one of the most iconic symbols of ancient Rome, was a site of horrific entertainment and brutal executions. Christians were often brought to the Colosseum to face death in front of large crowds. They were thrown to wild beasts, crucified, or killed in other gruesome ways. The willingness of Christians to face such gruesome deaths rather than deny their faith speaks volumes about their conviction and the strength of their belief in Jesus Christ. Following the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Roman Empire was a vast and powerful entity, encompassing numerous cultures and religions. The empire was characterized by its relative tolerance of various beliefs, as long as they did not threaten the stability of Roman rule. However, the rise of Christianity presented a unique challenge. Unlike the polytheistic religions prevalent throughout the empire, Christianity's monotheism and exclusive claims about Jesus as the only way to salvation set it apart. Christianity spread rapidly after Jesus' ascension, driven by the zeal of his apostles and early followers. Acts 2 verse 41 records that on the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church. The message of Jesus' life, death and resurrection resonated with people across different regions and cultures. As Christianity spread, it began to attract the attention of Roman authorities. Initially, persecution was sporadic and localized, but it gradually intensified. Paul, formerly known as Saul of Tarsus, played a pivotal role in the spread of Christianity. After his dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, Paul embarked on several missionary journeys that took him across the Roman Empire. His letters to the early churches form a significant part of the New Testament and provide insight into the challenges and triumphs of early Christian communities. Paul's unwavering dedication despite facing imprisonment, beatings, and eventually martyrdom, underscores the deep conviction of early Christians in the truth of Jesus' message. As we reflect on these historical accounts, we are reminded of the strength of faith and the enduring legacy of those who came before us. Their sacrifices and unwavering belief in Jesus continue to inspire and affirm the foundations of the Christian faith. Thank you for watching this exploration of historical evidence supporting the existence and divinity of Jesus Christ. If you found this video insightful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. God bless.